Welcome to the All Central Podcast. I'm your host, Pastor Larry Kirk. I'm joined today, not from the Brit from Baltimore. He is under the weather, uh, but I do have the Brit from Essex. That's what we'll Maryland. say. That's what we'll say from Essex, Maryland. Uh, Pastor Buddy Kaufman with us today. Welcome to the podcast, brother. Yeah, awesome. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's good. It's, yeah. it's been a while. I think we did yeah. one a long, long time ago. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. And uh, so it's good to have you back. Yeah. And uh, a, lot, a lot of things are happening in your world. A lot of things happen in my world. Uh, we just celebrated coming off of the 40th anniversary of Central. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been... When, when did you actually come, your family come to Central? My mom brought me and my sister when we were right around 14. I was around 14. My sister is okay. three years younger than me, so she was okay. like 11. Okay. And then that was at Shady Spring Elementary School when we started. Oh, see, I didn't know you guys started. I thought you started when they built the building. No, I told it. your dad that, you know, my sister and I, we went to youth group in the library at Shady Spring. You remember when Pastor of, Ron would take us there? Of course. To the library. But we really connected as a family when the building opened. Yeah. And so, you know, on the 40th anniversary, to fast forward a little bit through yeah. that, yeah. Um, I was thinking when we were celebrate that in the 40 years, so... 30 some years I've been here in my life, met my wife here, we got married yeah. and I thought I got married. Well, let me go back. I gave my heart to the Lord here. I was water baptized here. Yeah. I got married here. Yeah. All three of my kids have been dedicated here. And so you just That's see wild. the progression, right? Of the sen- the impact Central's made on my life. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's awesome. Pretty, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, that that's just one of many stories, you know, of, of people's lives totally. that, have, that have been changed and 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 that's what we're about, right? Yeah. That's it, the church globally should be just about just that story right there. Yeah. Um, watching people just give their life to Christ. Yeah. It changes them and not only it changes them in the moment and changes their family, but it changes the future. Sure, because then it's allowed me, what God has done in my life, it's allowed me to impact other people's lives. Yeah. And then my family as well, my wife, my yeah. kids, impacting other people's lives because of the impact God has had on our life here at Central. And we hear those stories a lot. Yeah, You know, we yeah, see that a lot with yeah. people that are here. And that most people wouldn't know this, that are listening to this, and, and even maybe even watch this on YouTube, but uh, you wouldn't know this, but Buddy, Pastor Buddy had long hair at the time that, <laughs> that I knew him, and he was a yes. rocker, you know. And he was the just, rocker part still exists, but the long hair has long gone. Yeah, it's long gone. <laughs> um, it has ran from, right. from, from his head. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, like all of us. Yes. Um, but, 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 you know, uh, you know, back in, back in the day when you had the long hair, whatever, there are so many things that we did to, uh, not only create space for God to move in people's yeah. lives, but, but he actually moved in ours in such a way that it really did make, um, one incredible impact yeah. um, on you personally. Yeah, we've been you know? talking about this this week, the yeah. experiences of God that yeah. I've yeah. had here, yeah. and then even the ministry that we were allowed to do. We got involved mm-hmm. in a discipleship program here that we were involved in, traveled all over the place. Yeah. And the ex- all over the U.S. Yeah, by yeah. the way, and the world, right. we did some stuff in in uh, in South South uh, South America stuff. Yeah, like just in van trips and going here and yeah. being a part. My wife was a part of that discipleship yep. program as yep. well. Yep. So to see God move on our hearts and change our lives, and the experiences that we had with God's presence. And we were talking about this week, we want to see other people experience that as well. When yeah. you experience the love, mercy, compassion, grace, all that of God, how it changes your life, you want to see somebody else experience that same thing in their life. Because yeah. you know it changed our lives. Yeah, and and it came through connection. Yeah, right? totally. It came through connection, not only connection with, uh, obviously, the, the end-all, be-all of anybody's change in, in, in a person's life. We always give credence and credit to people in our lives, which is so true. That's where it starts, but yeah, but really it ends with Christ, totally, and, and and the impact that He has in those moments, yeah. But it does take connection. That's why we always talk about you can't do life alone around here. Yeah, you need connection, yeah. and the reason why you need connection is you know the Bible talks about you know confess your faults one to another mm-hmm. that you may be healed. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of people who. Uh, who love Jesus with all their heart, but you know, where they're still struggling in their faith and and it's because they're not connected. Yeah. Get around others. When I was here as a teenager, sure. I knew the basics, if you will. Of course. Jesus died on the cross, rose from the grave. I knew those things. But when I really started to take a step in my walk with the Lord as a young adult, 
I looked at three people that I was surrounded with, especially in the Master's Commission Discipleship Program. Yeah, yeah. It was you, it was a guy named Rick McDonald and a guy named Tony Turner. Yeah. And guys are a few years older than me, but I would look at you all yeah. and I would say, I don't know exactly what it is, but no. whatever they have is what I want in my life. Sure. And I was open to that. Yeah. And so God, whatever they have is what I want. And now where I'm at in my stage of life, and obviously for the past years, I want somebody else to look at me that way. Whatever I have, uh, they, I want them to experience. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and those are, again, that goes back to connection. It goes back to relationships yeah. and that's where it starts. And yeah. that's, the, you know, it's where it started with Jesus and the disciples. It was connection and yeah. through that connection. Um, there's a lot of things that flows through connection. Um, uh, you know, when you, when you think about uh, being connected to people and connected to the right people yeah. in your life. You know, we always go back to you and I do personally, uh, uh, you know, Pastor Ron, PR. Yeah. And uh, those of you who don't know PR, PR has been with the church for 38 years. Um, um, and so he's had great impact. As a matter of fact, he was my youth pastor when I was 16 years old. So yep. it tells you how far back we go. <laughs> um, and I'll let, you, I'll let you in on it. I am 55. <laughs> so that tells you how long he's been with yep. us as a church, but also in my life. Yeah. And he still speaks into my life, and I give him place for that. But, uh, but it was such a great impact, but it was because we connected you know, we connected with PR, PR brought that type of moments and environments for us to really blossom, to grow, to grow in our faith, to um, trust us with things that I probably wouldn't (laughs) trust us with (laughs) looking back on it, you know, Um, you know, he, he, he really invested in all of us and, uh, and he allowed us to, to fail miserably at things. Um, um, not without rebuke or correction, obviously, because he was really good at that at the time. Um, he's gotten softer in his old age. Sorry, <laughs> PR. Um, but uh, but but just you know, course correcting our life in in those moments, and and you know, th- those are such valuable valuable 100%. moments because we're here today um, on this podcast. We're here today because of the connection that we have with PR, but most yeah. importantly, obviously, with the Lord. I mean, yeah. that, that goes without without saying, I think. Um, but, but through all of that, through all of that, it goes all the way back to relate just simplistic relationships. Yeah. yeah. I, when you mentioned PR, one thing I remember specifically about pastor Ron is he allowed us to fall forward. Even if we had mistakes yeah. and yeah. we were still falling forward because he still encouraged us. Yeah. So still was helping us along the yeah. path. And, you know, a question when you were talking about people, uh, a question I've got before, and I'm sure you have, mm-hmm. a lot of Christians have, well, you believe in God, but you've never seen him. Yeah. Well, somebody asked me one time, well, how do you believe in God when you've never seen him? And I said, oh, I, I've seen God. And it always gets a weird look. And, yeah. and then I start to mention people that I've seen the living God in. Yeah. I've seen the living God in Pastor Ron's life. Yeah. And I've seen the living God work through Pastor Ron. Living God worked sure. through you, yeah. Tony Turner, Rick McDonald, sure. like I said, mm-hmm. when we were Master's Commission. So I've seen the living God yeah. Yeah. work through people's lives. And I hope people see the living God living in me and living mm-hmm. through me. Yeah. And so you're so right. Those connections, being around people, allowing people yeah. to speak into your life. And our heart's got to be right. To, to allow people to speak into our lives, absolutely, right? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And I think that's what helped us grow at that time. Well, yeah, and it still does. Yeah, it and, still helps and we us grow. failed miserably, right? And yeah. so we were. There were moments where, like I shared the scripture earlier, you know, confess your faults one to another yeah. so you can be healed. Well, you, we had people to confess our faults to. Yeah. It wasn't just, yeah, you do take it to the Lord. Of yeah. course, you know, somebody's going to be in the comments like, oh, you got to take it to Jesus, you know, <laughs> of course. Well, of course. Of right? course, but the Bible is very clear that it's to one another so yeah. that you can be healed. Yeah. Not just forgiven. Right. I'm forgiven. Right. When I take it to Jesus, that's fine, but I'm not right. healed yet. Right. And healing comes through confessing your faults once another. And I really believe that goes back to accountability. And that's what that's what relationship is. That's sure. what connection is, is 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 our responsibility to one another. Like if I see Buddy falling or failing in something, you know, and uh, then I'm there not only to help him up, not to beat him up, but help him up sure. and say, you know what, man, this is probably not the best thing that you could do for your life. This is, you know, this is not God's best plan for your life. Let's, let's look at it through this lens or let's look at it this way. Let's learn from this. Yes. Let's learn from our mistakes, all those things, but, but let's, but let's get healed of that, you know, cause, cause, cause uh, maybe it's a sin in your life or maybe it's a sin in my life that somebody needs to come alongside of me and just um, course correct my life and help me in those areas. 
um, because it's not God's best design. But all of that comes through connection. Right? Yeah, and I'm a I'm a true believer that God is taking me to where I am now at 50 years old. Since we're confessing our ages today, yeah, yeah. Uh, God is taking to me where I am now at 50 years old because yeah. I've yielded myself to spiritual authority in my life. Yeah. And I've been open and willing to receive mm -hmm. what someone is speaking into my life. Yeah. And I believe God has then done things in me, obviously, but then God has done things through me because mm -hmm. of being humble and yielding myself. If you're not ready to yield yourself and receive yeah. what God wants to say to you, you'll stay in the same place. And I promise you this too, not only will you stay in the same place, it'll affect every relationship you ever have. And it thwarts your, your growth. Yep. Um, thwart. I love that word. Um, uh, it, it does. It 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 prohibits you from growing when yeah. you don't yield and submit. Of course, you know. Yeah. And I think and I think somebody asked me one time, like, uh, you know, how did you get to where you are? Well, all of that is your dad. You know, I was like, well, the the cool thing about my story is my dad didn't hire me. Right. Right. Even though he was the founding pastor, he didn't hire me. Actually, PR did, and it was out of mouth of two witnesses. Pastor Mike Palmieri, who was on the mission field at the time. Yeah. And through um, Pastor Ron, who was my youth pastor. Right. And both of them saw the design and the call that God had on my life. Yeah. They recognized that. Yeah. And that's when they went to my dad and said, hey, this is what we see about your son. Yeah. And he's like, well, good. That's confirming and let it be established out of two two mouths, you know, yeah. let everything be established. And, and so in that witness. And so... And so dad didn't hire me. Pastor Ron hired me. Right. And that's where it started. But it started with yielding to that, yeah. submitting to that, submitting to that and, and, and just not, you know what, I've, I've arrived. I've, you know, I'm the pastor's son, you know, I'm going to do this. No, it was nothing about that. It was all about walking in humility, yeah. submitting myself, not only to Jesus, but also to my authorities over me, which is PR, which is a stat, which is yeah. people there and serving. Yeah. And, and in those moments that that's, that's, I've always go back to that story because it, that's when my life was more, was elevated because of those things. Yeah. Not, not me being special and doing something crazy that, that just catapulted my ministry, uh, all of those things. It wasn't anything like that. It was actually sub submitting to, to authority. Yeah. And I remember a conversation in 1999 and you probably remember this myself and my wife, Melody yeah. and you and Pearl sitting in a Carabas on Bel Air yeah. road yeah. Yeah. and me ready to take that, that step as well. And just yeah. yielding myself to you and saying, feeling God's calling me to this. Yeah. You were feeling that. Yeah. And we took that step of faith in the ministry, and it was. And it, it was, was wild, though, because it was a Lutheran church. Those of you who don't know. When, when, well, that was later. That This was oh, when no, we did the Young was, Adult. That's right, Young Adults. We yes. stepped out yeah. and did the yeah. Young Adult that's ministry right. for a couple that's years. Right. And I then in 2003, that. Yeah. that happened. That was another one. Yes. That was another conversation. <laughs> yeah. And I think that was at Bertucci. So I can't remember. Yeah. But anyway. Um, but, yeah, but that was the second yeah. time that yeah. that happened that's as right. well. So two times that and happened. But what you're saying is the heart of all of it. Yeah. Yielding yourself. Yeah. And not only submitting yourself to God, but willing to yield yourself to those in authority, really yeah, spiritual and, and, authority and around saying, you. And saying, look, hey, does this sit well with yeah, you? Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> is this is this the Lord? Yes. Is this, you know, we're testing yeah. this. How do you, you feel know? about this? Right. And and we're, you know, is this the Holy Spirit yeah. doing this to for us, through us, with us? Yeah. What do you see? And and so in those moments, yeah, I think I think those are just incredible uh moments that create and and create the design for God's plan in our life and and just in, to enhance that and through through ministry like that. I think you know, Pastor Larry, I think people look at scripture and they look at the apostles, King David, yeah. Jacob. Yeah. And we um, because we live in a superhero culture, yeah. we almost look at them as like superheroes. They were a disaster though. Right. And they would say that if yeah. they were here. Yeah. Paul repeatedly said that in his writings. I was this, but now I'm this because yeah. of Christ. Yeah. And so when you look at that, the encouraging thing to all of us is they were just normal men and women, just like you and I. Yeah. And they were just, what did they do? They yielded themselves mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. From Moses, who said, I don't think I can do it, Lord. I don't have a good speaking voice. And yeah. God said, no, you are going to do it. Moses said, whatever <laughs> and, you want. And hey, by the way, I just killed an Egyptian <laughs> yeah, right. um, a little bit ago. Yeah, so yeah. from Moses yielding himself to God to lead yeah. the Israelites out of captivity to Mary saying, not my yeah. will, Lord, but your will be yeah. done. Yeah. Just normal men and women who yielded themselves 
and submitted themselves to God and to one another to encourage one another. Yeah, and I think and I think it goes back to uh, to a lot of people's struggles in life that they they're not yielding their life to it. Yeah, you know, it, it, life has enough trouble by itself. Jesus right. actually said, "Listen, you're going to have trouble in this world, right? But take heart, yeah. I've overcome the world." Yeah, right. Well, that's a promise. And, and yes, and, and that actually happened. He's yeah. overcome the world, and he overcame the world through his own personal life, like, yeah. like living it out. And, and, and we love that. But at the end of the day, I still have to yield myself to Jesus for me to be the yes. overcomer too. Yeah. And, and, and so yielding your life to Christ and yielding your life to people. You know, God, God I always feel like God has a, a, you know, really asked me to be a— a keeper of the culture of central, you know, and, and, um, and, and to be a shepherd and to be, um, a protector. And, and that's kind of in my nature anyway, in general. Yeah. But, but, uh, but it's something that I think God's called me to, uh, obviously as, pa- as a pastor and, 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 but, but in that, you know, in all of that, um, there, there are, uh, there are moments where I don't want to do that. Yeah. And I, you know, in, in, and, and it's because, you know, it's, it's a, it's a real battle. Yeah. It's a real struggle. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, but, but in all of it, in all of it, I have to yield myself to Christ sure. and yield myself to the Holy spirit and what he wants to do. And if I don't do that, the, the church doesn't get the best. My wife doesn't, and my, my kids don't, the church doesn't, my staff, pastor buddy doesn't get the best Larry possible. Yeah in those moments when I'm not yielding myself to to the Holy Spirit and what he wants to do. You reminded me of a great conversation. Moses had died. Yeah. It's Joshua's turn. Yeah. And Joshua's standing there and there's the promised land. Dad just spoke on this recently. Yes, and there's a great conversation yeah. there between God and Joshua. Yeah. And the Bible doesn't say this, but sometimes if you read between the lines, you're like, I wonder if that happened, where God's telling Joshua, I want you to go de- do this. Mm-hmm. And God says, be strong and courageous. And then Joshua says yeah. a couple things, and then God repeats it. Haven't I told you, be strong and courageous? Yeah. And then Joshua says a couple things, and then a third time God comes and says, I've told you yeah. <laughs> twice now, yeah. be strong and courageous for I am with you. So yeah. it was almost like God was speaking. It's kind of like what you're saying. Yeah. And then Joshua had these, oh, can I really do this? Mm-hmm. Am, am I really able to do that? And it was like God was reassuring him yeah. three times. Yeah, I've told you to be strong and courageous. I'll be with you. That's good. And so when you were saying that, it reminded me yeah. of that story, how in those moments when we feel weak or maybe like we can't, God reminds us, be strong and courageous. I am with you. And he repeats it three times to Joshua. And we know in Scripture, if it's repeated three times, it's uberly important. Uberly important. <laughs> and God's just reinforcing to Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Well, I think, I'm with you. You know, and I think I think it's all of our stories though. Yeah, right? totally. I think all of us need that. <laughs> yes. Right? Uh, of course. And maybe God's done that more than three times to me. But <laughs> me too. Amen. Um, yeah. <laughs> but 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 yeah, I get it. I totally understand that moment because he he is stepping into something of one of the greatest leaders in in, in the history of Israel, you know, that, right. of that group of people, you know, the Hebrew people. And, uh, and you know, he, he's the one that led them out of, and, and you know, I heard this statement the other day. <clears throat> this was so good. Um, when it came to what you're talking about and Moses was leading them out of Egypt, you know, they're, they were literally running for their lives. Yeah. Right. And they're in they're they're not facing the enemy. Mm-hmm. They're not facing the enemy. They're running from the right. enemy. Okay. Now that's awesome. That's good. Nobody wants to be a runner, though, right? right. You want to stand and fight. Most of them, you know, most people, most guys want to say, you know, no, I want to stand and fight. I don't want to run. Yeah, you know, um, unless you're a lover, not a fighter, you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, but but they're running. The story is they're running from their enemy. Yeah. Okay, and they're crossing, and there's a miracle that takes place. You know, yeah. the the parting of the Red sea, sea, the Red and, yeah. Sea, and Moses. You know, all of that. That's incredible. What an incredible leader. But Moses led them in circles, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, Forty years. Forty years in circles, <laughs> and all of no a sudden, Google Maps. No Google Maps, <laughs> right? That's that was the problem. No ways. <laughs> Which, by the way, the Jews <laughs> created ways. <laughs> That came out of Israel, by right. the way, he did. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, so they're going in circles. They run from the enemy, but now God is telling Joshua to face the enemy. Yeah. And to get run run to Towards the enemy, the enemy yeah. and fight. Yeah. Right? 
I want you to cross this river. Another miracle holds back the water yeah. in a heap. I think the Bible says in, in one translation in a heap and, and they cross over and, and yet this is the land I've given you now go possess it. Now they have to take it to the enemy. Yeah. And I think that required more faith in that of moment. Course. In, yes. in that moment, yes. like, like in my brain, yeah. if I'm shifting from running from the enemy yeah. and wandering for 40 years away from everything and not fighting yeah. anything, and now I'm faced to step into a yeah. fight, yeah. that takes more courage. Yeah. And I heard it said like this, and I love, I love this because um, I can't remember who said it, but I wrote it down the other day. And, and it's something where he was talking about how the love of God casts out all fear. Mm -hmm. And God was speaking to this pe people group and saying, listen, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Just showing you that I'm going to be, I love you. Yeah. I've brought you into myself. You know, I've brought you uh, out. The Bible says I don't, uh, as, as Eagle's wings to myself, like, like this is the kind of love I have for you. Yeah. And he talked about how love creates this connection. And then he went into from connection, it creates clarity for people. Mm. And when it's clear, it creates a confidence. Yeah. And then when you have confidence, you can step into courage and have the courage to go and do. Be strong and courageous because I am with you. This is what I'm going to do. That's exactly it. <laughs> right. That's exactly it. So so that story, you know, in, in that is is just a, a story of really facing maybe your greatest fears and facing and, and, and trusting God with it, that he said, this is what I want you to do. This yeah. is where I want you to go. Yeah. After 40 years of wandering, running from the enemy, right now you're going to face the enemy. It's going from being on the defensive to the offensive yeah. and saying, no more am I going to allow the enemy to have rule in my life and or that, place in my and life. And that is exactly what, what Christians need to do in their life. I agree 100%. You cannot be on the defensive. Yes. You can't be on, um, you can't be running away from the enemy. Right. You got to face the enemy. Right. And you got to take back what is rightfully yours. Yeah, it's totally true. It reminds me of a commercial I used at a message one time. There was a Marines commercial <laughs> that was there. And thank you to all of our military yeah, and, our, yeah. and our first responders. Because yeah. it was one thing that stood out to me about 9-11 too. And we were together when that happened. Um, this Marines commercial showed all this chaos in the background. And mm -hmm. it, the commercial showed the Marines running towards it. Yeah. On 9-11, what, what took me back was the people were running away from disaster, of course, sure, and of all course. the first responders were running towards it. Yeah. And you are so right in that for too long, Christians have just accepted yeah. that we need to this be on the, the way defensive yeah. and the enemy's on the prowl and yeah. he's the attacker and he's yeah. the one that comes in. But you're totally right. The Christians need to shift gears and oh, to man. know you have power. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you yeah. to not only give you peace, comfort, direction, and all those things, but to give you power yes. so that you can be what? Overcome. You're yes. a priesthood, a holy nation. You're called by God. Yeah. You're destined. You're you're pointed in this direction so that God can use you. That's all in the to New Testament the world, as well. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's all in the New Testament as you well. You are empowered to live this out, yeah. not to be meek and in the corner and hiding yeah. from the enemy, but yeah. no, to take charge and take hold of what God says is yeah. rightfully ours. Being kind ours. is not being meek. You know what I'm saying? Right. You, yeah, be kind. Yeah, you know? Of course. You ne no one has ever proved anything in an argument with any with with about about God. I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm not here to argue with you yeah. about God. I'm here to demonstrate what God looks like. Yeah. That's yeah. that's my job. That's yeah. your job. That's everybody's job that follows Jesus is to demonstrate what God looks like in the earth. Yeah, and I don't know about you, Pastor Larry, but sometimes when the enemy tries to come against my mind, which yeah. to me is one of the greatest battlefields we ever face, I'll be in my car and I would encourage everybody to do this. I'll just speak it out loud. Yeah. God, that is yeah. not your thought. That is not from of you. Of course you, you should. You have not put yeah. those things in my mind, and I push them back in the name of Jesus, not by my authority, but by the authority of right? Jesus. What scripture say? Take hold of everything yeah. that One exalts, of my favorite. exalts itself. Yeah, like lifts itself up above yeah. above what God says about you. Yes, and we got to take hold of that, and you have to be not on the defensive and walking right. in circles. No, we got to have a direct line. Yeah, we're crossing the river. We're facing the enemy, and we're yeah. going to destroy the enemy in our life. The, the, back then, it was a different type of enemy, but our enemy now is 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 uh, not of this world, right? Um, and and it's not it's not people, it's it's just not of this world. No, principality. Although high although the yeah. enemy works in people, yeah. 
Just uh, like God works in us. Right. <laughs> it works with in people right. to try to destroy what God wants to do in the earth, right. but but it's not with people. It's right. it's with the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. And that's what we're here to cast out. Yeah. That's what we're here to attack. Yeah. That's why the church has to be on the offensive, not the defensive anymore. Yes. We're not we're not we should not be a doormat to uh to the kingdom of darkness we should actually elevate our lives because of what god has elevated us out of yeah he has brought us out of the ash heap of life yeah and restored us and redeemed us and now we have that authority totally and and, and the thing is is you know when jesus finished it all when jesus finished it all the bible says that he ascended to the right hand of God and sat down. And 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 when they sat down, when a rabbi would sit down and, and he would say, look, the sacrifice that's done, everything has been done, it's finished, it's done, it's all complete, right? And and so Jesus then is not, you know, people think, well, Jesus is, well, no, Jesus isn't at work today because he's finished the work already. Yeah. He has sent us the it Holy Spirit yeah. in our life. Yeah. To accomplish everything he said yeah. and that's exactly what he told his disciples yeah. listen you got to go to jerusalem you got to wait there for a moment and when the holy spirit is being poured out you're going to need this and why you're going to need this is because you need to take it to jerusalem to your home you need to take it to your nations judea and samaria and you need to take it to the world yeah the uttermost parts of the world that's that's eliminating the kingdom kingdom of darkness when we have that type of authority and when we know that we have that and i think most people and I'm going back to something. Most people don't have that because they're not yielding their life yeah. to the one who who has given us the power to absolutely obliterate the kingdom of darkness in yes. this world. Well, that verse you just said, you will receive what? Power. Power. Mm -hmm. Let me go back real quick to a story yeah. you told to get your thought on this too. There's When Moses comes up to the Red Sea, there's a little line in there that a lot of people just read right over. But it says, because this is the power that is inside of us that God's given us. Mm -hmm. And it says, Moses came up to the, and, and God said this to Moses, here's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. I want you to take your staff and I want you to hold it out over the waters of the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Then it says this, then I will part the Red Sea. That's right. That's very important. It's very important. Because you gotta ask yourself this question, what if Moses would have doubted God, mm -hmm. doubted himself, doubted the call, doubted what God had called him to, and said, I don't think I can do it. Too many Christians to me aren't willing to allow God to work through them to hold the staff out and then see the incredible miracle happen okay. of the parting of the Red I got, Sea. I got one, another one for you. Yeah. They come to the Jordan River. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, well, oh, definitely. <laughs> Same thing. Same yeah. thing. They said, they said, so when you step into yep. the water, there could have been so much doubt behind what sure. God wanted them to do in that sure. moment. And, and the Bible talks about them walking and waiting in the water before anything else happened. Yeah, it wasn't there a description that it almost, it was up it to was like their all neck. all the way up to their, yeah. their chest, their before neck. It actually, Can you imagine yeah. like, well, I guess we're going under with the Ark of the Covenant. I, in think, our, I think people you know, feel like that sometimes in yeah. life, like they're almost yeah. drowning. They're almost drowning, but... And but God's about to but do it's, something. But, but it's about <laughs> it's it's about that next step, yeah. right? And trusting God with it. And that's what that's that's the whole thing, what we're yes. talking about today, yeah. is that connection with God yeah. and understanding that, giving us the confidence and then giving us the courage to step into that and, and to face the enemy because the enemy is in front of us. Yeah. We're not going to run from it anymore. We're not Moses. We're not, we're not under that... Right. Leadership. We're under Joshua now, and we're we're charging this thing, man. Yeah, exactly. We're going to go take the land, and so in that, and and but what I love about what the Ark of the Covenant represented in that, right, was it represents the presence of God. Yeah, and we have to follow the presence of God, yes. Pastor Buddy. Yeah. We've got to follow yeah. the presence. When we follow the presence of God, that's when boom, waters start to part. Yeah, enemies start to flee. Uh, kingdom of darkness is destroyed through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and New Testament life. says that Moses and Jacob and Joshua and all yeah. we just talked about was the New Testament. They long to have what you yeah. now have, what yeah. we have, what which we is have. the Holy Spirit exactly. inside of us. You literally have yeah. the power of the living God in you to do everything you just said. And Jesus <laughs> even said it too. He said, he said, blessed are those who have uh, never seen. Yeah. You've never seen me. Like blessed, you're so much more blessed because yeah. of your faith in me. Yeah. You've never seen me do a miracle. You've never seen yeah. me. You've heard about me. You've read about me. But blessed are those who have never seen and yet still believe. Yeah. Right? 
that's us today. Yeah, amen that's to us, that. Man. And it's incredible to know that we can live that out every day. Every day, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah, definitely. Thank, thanks I, for hanging out. Of course. Me. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> so much fun. Man. Yeah, yeah. So much fun. Yeah, Great we stories. believe that for everybody watching. We yeah. really do. We do. Yeah. We do. We believe it yeah. for everybody. And I, I'm excited yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited about it. So, well, that concludes today's podcast. And uh, we hope that in some way this enriched 